tearless time. What's up, everybody? So, it's been a while since we've done a Nesb2 tier list, but I've decided I think it's high time that we do one, right? So, not only are we going to do a Nesb2 tier list, but we're just going to talk about the meta as a whole. So, we're going to get right into this. Make sure that if you want to stay up to date with the meta, with competitive scene, with the casual stuff, that you subscribe to this channel and just give it a like because it really does support it. And we're trying to close out our goal of getting to 1,000 subscribers. So, like, it would be just super appreciated. We're almost there, right? We're less than 25 away. So, hopefully, with this video and a couple others, we can make it before the end of May. That's the goal. So, without further delay, I've structured this in a way to where I think best fits the description for the way the Daz 2 is at right now. We have the meta, which is pretty much the equivalent to top tiers. And it's just the characters that run the meta. They're a step above, like, everyone else. They have really overtuned options. They all have really good burst options, really good frame data, really good combos. You know, a multitude of combos. DI doesn't seem to affect them in the same way that it may affect a character in the middle or lowest tier, right? Their weight might be really good. Their recovery might be really good. Their options are just better than everyone else's, right? Great, but not meta. These are characters that everybody says, no, they're super good, or they have this and they have that, and they might really have some crazy options, right? But, unfortunately, these characters are balanced, <laughs> and uh, so they actually might have a weakness or two, right? And so we're going to talk about those characters and their flaws, as well as if that's holding them back from being in the meta, or if those things are pretty much designed into the character, and if they're intentionally held back in that way, or or what, you know? So, we'll get to that. And then, not meta, but can work. And pretty much this is the lowest tier. These are characters that just, they're not really winning much. People have kind of stopped playing them as much. The results maybe have dropped off. These characters might have gotten nerfed, right? The player base maybe isn't as active competitively, things like that, right? So it's just what we're seeing realistically, right? There are things that we're seeing that maybe just aren't aren't cooking, right? So without further ado, let's get through this tier list. So at the bottom, number one, right? We have Zim. And it's, it's pretty much been like every tier list now. I've had Zim at the bottom and he just sucks. Like he doesn't have a great recovery Gur is really weak so you can't really use Gur, your side special if you want to live when you get thrown off stage because you have to literally have slime to get off stage which means that you have to use bomb which doesn't really function entirely if you try to throw out sometimes when you have Gur and try to pick up Gur, then you have a bomb stuck in your hand and then you explode you have all of these options that just don't work they're glitchy they're buggy they've tried fixing them a ton of times he just still doesn't work you know so it's just been one of those things where he just doesn't work. Jimmy, who, when he spawns Goddard uh, and loses Goddard, Goddard dies and you have no issue with recovering. Your recovery doesn't change, the fuel doesn't change, the distance and speed don't change. Gur, when Gur dies, Zim literally can't go anywhere. So I think that a huge thing to make this character actually viable, at least like potentially viable, would simply just be to make it so that when he up specials, there's no no more of that little hop up special. Just make it only the Gur up special, where it's almost like a fox up special, where you pretty much stand in a second, pause, and shoot yourself up. So just, that has to be a rework. His recovery needs a rework. If nothing else, I think that he deserves a buff like that, right? Moving on. Next to him, Nigel. I think that Nigel is great. He doesn't have like any necessarily like crazy flaws, but like he also just is not up to par with the rest of the cast. He struggles in a lot of matchups. He's floaty. Airspeed's nice, and stuff like fair and side special into snap uh, are great, but it just doesn't really have ways in versus many characters, especially when you always have to approach from the sky. And the new bull rush attack, the way they reworked it, is a little wonky. And while it can catch some people off guard, it's not anywhere near helping you out like completely, right? And so, 
I just think that we also don't see this character enough. Even top players who do use the character competitively, like Pug X, just aren't getting results. They pretty much, nowadays, Pug, he's going like two, two at best. And even then, he's pretty much, I think, most recent Dutchman's event he entered, he went like one and two or own oh two. So it's just one of the situations where even the best representatives are literally completely struggling to use this character. And I honestly, it's almost like these two are completely below the rest of the characters in terms of their uh, viability. So, of the characters in this game, I'd say these two are definitely the highest in struggles. Which definitely is funny compared to where they were in the previous game, but that's a whole topic for another video. But, moving on here. We've got Patrick. And this might be a crazy take, but genuinely, Patrick has seen better days. When you took out his uh, whole meta of his edge cancel up special, which you'd seen prior and you've seen with top players like Grayson and other Patrick mains, like Leo, you saw them using that burst speed to pretty much mix up their movement and then finally get in onto their opponents. And while Patrick does have some insane options, as well as stuff that other characters have on this list, like the command grab, uh, slime canceling for racking up damage, his snare, his sup air, that is a giant multi-hit, can, can cover people trying to reach the ledge. He has all these options. He has a great back air, great up air, great nair. You know, he has all these great options. Lariat's actually really good as a get off me tool out of shield. EX Lariat is even better for a ledge. So, you have all these options that are really good. But unfortunately, what holds him back is simply just that he struggles with being able to get in now. Now that he's actually toned down, he doesn't have that kind of burst speed everywhere. He doesn't have the ability to simply just like schmoove, you know? And so, that paired along with people being able to like learn and understand how he's able to be edge guarded has made it really hard for Patrick Mains to succeed. Grayson competed a little bit ago, hasn't competed in a while now, but I think went like one and two or something in their in their most recent Dutchman's, which was uh, actually quite a bit ago. What is going on? What did I just do? Whoops. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, like I think that he, uh, Grayson just definitely and other Patrick Mays definitely have been struggling. We've seen like uh, Kenzie and other Patrick Mains who have been like trying to make the character work, just really not getting too much either. But between up special being able to be edge guarded, edge hogged, and like just generally beaten pretty easily, as well as just generally we're seeing the character just not get the results he's getting, he's definitely had better days. And I think that he's definitely in this list because you know, everybody's gonna say but cherry he can do this he can do that he's great like as a character he's solid but it's just it's not doing too hot you know he's not doing he's not doing the work and that's gonna be uh, a trend for this these five characters i actually have in this spot so next one reptar meta militia is probably like you're damn right he sucks in my uh youtube comments right now and uh, before they pop off, I'm just going to say this. Reptar is deceptive because he absolutely feels, and maybe some people are traumatized from pre-patch Reptar, because every patch Reptar got, it was a nerf in a gut, you know. The up special nerf, the uh, fire nerf is insane, and it makes it a lot different to fight against Reptar now, right? You don't see Reptars throwing out fireballs a lot now, which is huge, you know. So I think that he has definitely struggled the most in terms of results uh, from this drop-off. You're seeing a lot less Reptar mains even uh, now. And it just doesn't seem like they're doing too hot. Frosty does well at Huge Raw Mondays pretty much every week, even when he's not playing Reptar. But that, that's just because he's Frosty, you know, he's built different. But like when he does enter stuff like Dutchman's Dungeon, he's lost to... Uh, <laughs> he's lost to Help Me, I think. I, whichever Zim it was, I think it was Help Me. But he lost to Zim, and it's like, come on, you're losing to Zim. Any character that loses to Zim, like, they must be bad, right? <laughs> no, but jo joking aside, like, Reptar definitely has seen better days. The character, like, if you want him to restore, be restored to his uh, former glory, he's gonna need a pick-me-up, you know? Results-wise, he is not the same beast that he once was. And nerfs have definitely been uh, attributed to that, in my opinion. So, the final character in this not great uh, 
or not meta great but can work tier is garfield another character that was killed by patches i'd say or at least really uh crippled by them is just that garfield really struggles uh now because he is just simply not tuned like the rest of the cast the rest of the cast has like a ton of crazy stuff they actually have stuff on a lot of different di's different options that they still cover you know garfield just does not have that he has sup air which still the, the connecting multi hits of are a little, little inconsistent here or there he has um shine stuff but it's like if you want shine stuff just play el tigre who has more stuff off of it you know and it's less hard to do the difficulty is way less for el tigre his recovery is easily edge guardable and edge hoggable and uh being able to use sugar rush no longer obviously gives you the bendable sugar rush infinite but it also makes your fast fall speed way higher and what that does is it makes you easier to be comboed by the meta it makes you easier to fall to your death despite the up special height uh boost so it doesn't really help your recovery which is the main thing that people are able to abuse when you aren't in that mode his projectiles still really don't do much for him in the way of dealing with zoners despite him also having a shine which does help um and it, results wise he just doesn't have them you know so it's like we can't say anything about this character besides that maybe he'll be decent one day but everybody above him has a multitude of results as well as recent results and plenty of top players currently and players in general that actually are competing so it's hard to say like what this character needs but the first thing he needs is a player that wants to push him so that we can see if his current version is even worth playing so if you're out there and you want to be an inspiration to many i would say pick up garfield and make him work because we need to figure out if he can <laughs> but moving on to the first character in great but not meta tier we have jenny jenny has seen a multitude of results from bread from scooter dupes from Matador especially, who's been really pushing the character as of late, just recently top aided again in the event uh, Dutchman's Dungeon 11. I believe did so in 10 as well. He's done so in multiple, as well as we've been seeing in Frosty Freezy Friday weeklies, the same thing, uh, Jenny doing quite well. And this is also despite the fact that the character simply doesn't have a good recovery. And you might be saying, what do you mean? They can fly around, it's any direction, it's really responsive? Well, actually, <laughs> uh, Jenny has a glitch where currently, when you fly towards the ledge, normally where she'd snap it, she just never does. So you might be flying trying to grab ledge, and you'll get what's called the Jenny recovery glitch, where she'll fly into the ledge, try to grab it, doesn't snap, and then you have no other option because maybe your opponent's trying to edge guard you, you know, so you can't go up, you're trying to grab a ledge. Go into free fall and then you fall you fall and die so it's like you have no option <laughs> really that's safe right especially if you're coming from like a far away uh place you're trying to get back and you've used all the fuel and then all of a sudden you bump your head in the ledge and you're dead right so all that work that you deserve to get back for just simply did not work <laughs> so she definitely struggles in that department it's a big glitch that has been affecting a ton of jenny players pretty much all of the top ones very consistently and i think that if there is anything that needs a fix it definitely needs to be that right so hopefully that that gets fixed but you never know right so next up on this list we're going to have none other than plankton who i think uh just talking with top players and just talking with people he's one of those ones where the potential is very high for this character and the problem with plankton is that right now he's an enigma people don't know like a lot of players generally think he's bad a lot of top players think he's really good uh, and cringe, but none of them want to pick him up because they hate the idea of this character <laughs> being like done right. Because this character has a lot of scary things. He has sauce, quite literally. He has the plankton sauce, the chim sauce. That stuff is insane. The way it decreases your DI, uh, like in terms of the like impact of it when you hold right or whatever, it literally makes it harder for you to get out of combos, right? The down tilt combos. Down tilt is an insane option. Like, so this character has movement tools with uh, neutral snare, or strong neutral air. So it's just all of these options, right? I think he's around here, personally, right now. I think the characters above him are too good to say, hey, they're better than this. But I think Plankton absolutely is the best uh, heavy character 
like in the game right now. It absolutely has to be Plankton. His recovery is decent. Up air gives him a bit of flexibility with when he wants to recover. Uh, there's some other tech with that that Lily sure she found, I believe, where like you can pretty much use it anytime if you don't do a move after the up air or something like that. Lily, if you're in the comments, feel free to explain the Plankton tech, the recovery tech with up air. I know it exists, I just don't. I literally only heard about it yesterday when we were doing Dutchman's Dungeon 11, so. And I was healing, so I wasn't able to really pick up on it completely, but let me know. I, I found that stuff really interesting, but character, while it hasn't had the results, I think definitely has had the conversation run enough to where I'd say this is where I'm comfortable saying officially he is in the meta. Next up, we've got Spongebob. And Spongebob, while he hasn't seen the huge amount of results at the end of the season, Revelo and others do and were playing him, so Sunky is one of them. And We've been seeing these players really push the character. There's been new developments being made with the character. He still has tons of room left to grow. And I think that, like, he's solidified himself as one of those just great characters, the good characters, you know, that, <sighs> unfortunately, when he got hit by nerf uh, the nerfs and the patches, it's just not the same demon he once was if you're a SpongeBob fan. Um, stuff like Uppy to Supper not being as strong of an option, you know, stuff like that just... It is what it is, you know. You gotta just kind of take it at what you get, get, what you can get. So, yeah, this is not much to say about him. He's just he's here. He's got way more room left to grow in the meta, and that's terrifying for me to think about because this character is a nuisance for me to fight personally. <laughs> but we'll see how he does, right? Next up, Raphael, and I've always shit on Raphael. I've always talked bad about him, but Lotum, uh, one of the best, if not the best. Uh, Raphael's just cooks with this character has shown there's so much ways to ap uh, apply a slime to this character that other characters may not even like realize they have the applications to and it just definitely has proven to me that this character is up there and uh, yeah, that's kind of gonna be the running theme for the next few characters is that they've proven themselves to be a good character a great character but maybe just not the meta right now Dude still struggles with killing, which in this game, if you can't kill easily, you're kind of, you're kind of shit out of luck, you know, you don't have a, there's no way you have a chance to, uh, like, keep up, you know. Every top tier character in this game, and even the characters higher up on the scrape and net meta part of the list, all have a way to kill, whether it's a stray hit, whether it's a large, just general, like, multi-hitbox, whether it's a grab, whether it's something that they can consistently get that is easy for them to obtain regularly throughout a, a match in a tournament setup scenario. And uh, Raph, he has stuff, you know. He has lots of it, but just not enough, right? So that's why he's here on this part of the list. Next up, Zuko. Also piloted by Lottam and probably the best of them, the uh, bunch. Oh, my, my webcam died, chat. <laughs> what do we do, chat? They were back. <laughs> that was so weird. But anyways. Yeah. Zuko. I have no clue how long my face was gone. But whatever. We'll roll with it. Zuko. Definitely piloted by Lottam again. Probably the best one. Solve. Top player of Korra. Also has been playing him a lot. So it's one of those things where we're seeing this character piloted by multiple people. But he's still very much in his infancy. Right? This character has a ton of... Of potential his da damage output is very high they've currently said both of them and i play zuko as well it's just that we all agree that the ability with him with using sword uh fair strong fair forward item toss and uh just general uh like combos into that sword fair the sword strong fair are the best options for him for killing and he gets it a lot you know he has combos into it 
Uh, up air is a really good combo tool. You pretty much can combo up air into itself once or twice. Read the DI, follow the DI, you know. Just keep up comboing with up air. Maybe get a Naren, a fair here or there, you know. And he's got some pretty good sauce with that. Side special is really good to follow up with combos. His ledge pressure is insane. He's got a lot of room to grow, but the one weakness he definitely struggles with is recovery. And there are other characters that maybe share this trait but um with like just the speed at which he like goes up and drifts and whatnot it just kind of makes him struggle a little bit more granted we'll see how he uh, fares as he gets like more solidified into the meta because he's only been out for a little bit now right so we're gonna wait and see how long it takes for him to kind of figure himself out because i def definitely think other characters on this list who are dlc like mr krabs have figured out their place in the meta at this point in time but i think this is where he's at next up another character that's definitely proven their worth <laughs> so to speak is ember ember has seen a multitude a multitude a multitude of top eights a multitude of top fives by multiple top players they've seen tunist shiny Blazing Pasta. So many top players of Ember have been doing well. Neutral's been showing off some insane tech. Like, we have four top players of, of uh, Ember who are all just kicking ass, doing stuff, taking names, you know. Like, the results have been insane. Dutchman's Dungeon. Like, Nintunis, I think, just missed the top eight yesterday. Defeated Locus, probably number two in the world right now at Nesby. Like, I think defeated him 2-0, 2-1, one of the two. I can't remember, but it was insane. Like, you'll have to watch that set. It was crazy. A crazy, crazy, crazy thing to see. And Ember definitely written off by a lot of the community still. And I think people have to get over the fact that Ember is good. People have to realize that just because you have a, like a visually shitty recovery, that when you have limit and you're able to just simply go higher... When you have limit and just or you can just think about using your slime to recover like when you have moves like hers that are as big that last as long as they do that deal as much as the damage as they do and are as fast as hers you're a good character her bear is super safe it kills it's really strong it's fast it's very it's not active for too long but it's like fast i think it's like frame four or something like that or it's active for four frames one of the two but man like that move is just insane uh you can combo into it by the way, you can combo into Bear without slime. Like, what? Like, she has sauce. Like, quite literally, she has the craziest shit imaginable. So, she definitely is up this high on this list. I would say it's possible that she could go higher. But I definitely think uh, the ca the characters above her um, have made a case for themselves. You know what I mean? So, next up on this list, Mr. Krabs. Definitely a proven good character that buff was needed the money buff was absolutely needed for this character to shine in the meta bread the best crabs easily just decimating people a lot more people have picked up this character at the low level the mid level and the top level we have players like the beanery who've been juggling him jimmy and others who are doing quite well at the weekly style scene we have brad who's been doing really well making waves with solo crabs and solo uh jenny in his runs doing quite well when he does show up we have meaty who just recently top aided at uh dutchman's dungeon 11 the sweatiest tournament every week and defeated top players took games off of care of players like locus uh with mr crabs just showing off his broken spinning move into oblivion <laughs> is the words that people hate to hear when fighting Mr. Krebs. So he has combos that start from just his sword side special. He has combos into his fair, his strong nair. Like he has uh, killing blows with his into his strong up air, into his light up air. He has just insane damage output. You can slime cancel the uh, move on the ground, your side special, and then just redo it after they've unshielded if they think you're going to stop using the move. You can grab out of slime cancel when you do side special on shield. The second level pops them up. You can combo into dime when you have it as a like zero to death. It's insane. It's like this character is going to be so cracked when people continue to figure out his metagame. And I think he does struggle in a lot of ways, but I think uh, especially after last night, 
I used to think that he struggled to recover, but Meaty really showing their creativeness with using slime canceling, slime dashing, and snare to get themselves horizontally back far enough to where they can just completely skip the ledge. And even against characters that like Beavers that actually have like an insanely easy time edge guarding, that's impressive to see. So I think that this character has a lot of potential. Depending on how the patches treat him, and it, like if he gets buffed, he's gotta be insane. I've joked, I'm like, if Krabs gets buffed, I'm banning him. <laughs> I probably won't, but I mean, if the if the buffs are that good, right? But this character is a menace. He's definitely solidified himself as like this middle topish, like great character, just not a, like a top tier threat, just because he does have weaknesses. Those being just at his level one state, if you can't build up cash, you're gonna suck. As well as the fact that while that's not as hard to get over now, he also has technically a recovery problem where if he's too low and you grab the ledge, his up special will hit you at the ledge and then not grab the ledge, meaning that you've pretty much edge hogged him even though he has a tether recovery. And Grandma Gertie doesn't have this problem, so right there his tether just is simply worse than hers just by design, which fair enough, I suppose. But yeah, crabs in a nutshell, right? Next up, Lucy. Megas still seemingly one of the main top th uh, player threats, juggling her and Gerald. Did well last night with Solo Lucy, I think making top 8 with her, single-handedly. And um, still gets decent results. We're not as many as she did when Slimebox was around, but that's also because this is a nerfed state of her, right? But still a, definitely a threat. Up air is definitely scary. Vampire mode, definitely still scary. Coffin in this game, just like Nesborn, definitely still scary. So she checks off all these boxes. Recovery, decent, but edge guardable. She's light, so she can die somewhat early, you know, stuff like that. But other than that, I'd say around here is where I would put her in the meta right now. Nothing more to say. Moving on, we have Ren and Stimpy, who recently got themselves a buff. They, before their strong up air would be a multi-hit that just simply wouldn't work. And now, they're at a point where their strong up air works as a single hit move, and it sends at this weird diagonal out angle, and it doesn't really kill, but it does send them out. But uh, me and Arachnite and some others at our local scene have been theory crafting with this, and I've been playing against the matchup of Ren and Stimpy quite a lot these past couple weeks just due to Arachnite. So just seeing the character uh, improve both at the top level with Blazing Pasta, as well as at the mid level with Arachnite, we're just seeing this character quite frequently, you know, whether that's online or offline. But Arachnite has been theory crafting with the idea of using Sup Air into Slime Dash something or a Jump EX uh, Weenie Car to just like follow up that Sup Air with. And it's a new move. It's completely reworked in how the way it used to work as a multi hit. And now it actually functions, which is great for the Ren and Stimpy fans. They love that this move works now. But it isn't as fun, they've told me, <laughs> as uh, the strong up air when it did work with those drag down combos was. But understandable. Like, it's not the same thing, you know? So. This character, definitely still strong. Back air is still definitely strong. They're heavy, they're floaty, so they're hard to combo. They have really good recovery with that weenie car, whether you EX it or not. Uh, they have really good zoning with that projectile. You know, the EX version is insane. So it's like they have all these options that are really good. The recovery is still frame 4, get off me tool, but uh, definitely doesn't go the distance, you know, and can be edge guarded occasionally. So strong character, just not stronger than those above them, especially in results. Results wise, they are not doing the best, but early season at majors, Blazing when he's there does cook. So just check him at majors if, if uh, Blazing Pasta is in attendance, right? Next up, Donatello. I think he's still significantly better than his uh, turtle brother counterpart, but he still is getting plenty of results. Sparks did well at LB LMBM. He did well at Dutchman's Dungeons when he enters. Sparks will be at Combo Breaker at the end of this PR season, so we're going to be seeing that character one more time. Has great nair, combo into back air, has insane bursts with his killing when you want, can go crazy deep for those edge guards due to smoke bomb. His up air can combo into sup air, up B, sup air, like all these things, you know, like all these slime cancel combos, all these gigantic ranged moves. Electric Ball is still like, has a lot of depth that hasn't been really discovered yet. It still has a lot of stuff that really isn't even being used yet. And so the potential for this character to grow is still really high, I'd say. So we're going to see how this character does just in the long term, you know, we're going to see what this character can do. So I'd say he's definitely here right now in the current meta. Next up, 
a character that I was asking about today. I was asking in uh, Discord, in the Nick Brawl Grinders Discord, which you should totally join, by the way. It's in the description. Is that which character is the most underrated currently? And one of the top answers I got was April. April O'Neil, another TMNT rep. She definitely struggles. And she's a character that struggles, but not in results, not in moveset, but in public reception. People aren't sure what the heck this character is and how good they are, but generally people think that she's underrated. And Ann Carbuncle, a new player who just seemingly came out of the woodworks, has been kicking some ass. We've been seeing uh, Tofu, when they enter brackets, does really well. We've been seeing other players at the top level just cook with this character, you know. Doing up special into uh, the breaking news is a really good option. That microphone, you know, like really good option. Kills really early is a really good kill confirm. Nair into uh, forward strong is a really good option for killing. We've seen back air into sup air or back air into up strong. So like so many options from her just are good. Up air is a good juggle tool. Up throw up air is a really good starter. Like you have all these options that are really good. Nair is insane, right? Fair is good for edge guarding. Camera is nuts and still unexplored with like slime options, you know? I think that this character definitely is up here. She definitely is a menace and she definitely is a very good character. Maybe even higher than this. Cause I honestly think that the only thing that is like bad about her is the fact that she has fuel for her up special, which means that if you keep hitting her out off ledge, then when she resets that situation over and over, eventually she's gonna come out negative because then her recovery finally will run out of fuel. <laughs> so. And even then, she has flip kick, so she can get back pretty, pretty like easily, right? And so, I mean, that's not really like a weakness, right? It's just like, it's, like it is, but it's not like a big weakness. So, this is where I think she's at currently. I think she could go way higher, but only time will tell, right? Next up, El Tigre. El Tigre, definitely a character that has seen better days, but I think is still really, really good. I just think that he finally has a weakness, and that is his risk reward. And he's been turned into almost like a two-face of characters, where his risk is put into one move, and his reward is put into every other move. <laughs> so if that makes sense, should I wrap your head around that? But um, yeah, El Tigre, he pretty much is still insane, the insane combo devil he was, you know, still kills you, still does like snare into slime cancel dare, you know, still has all those combos, right? Up, up special, or up throw up special, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Still does all those things, right? Shine is still really cool and easy to use. Side special still does all the stuff he still does. But now, the nerf to his up special, in terms of the ledge grabbing, is so precise that it definitely has caused players to have to consider when they go off stage and how deep they're going. Because they actually have to make it back to ledge. And some stages are much more forgiving than others. I think Jelly is way too harsh in terms of punishing players for not recovering properly. Whereas other stages are actually much more uh, easy to grab the ledge of, or at least more similar to when they used to be pre-patch. So that definitely has skewed the results a bit. Sego and other top players of them have definitely been talking about it, saying it's not the best nerf. I don't like it. It shouldn't have happened. Musky, a character, a player who is top player in S1, has definitely been struggling a little bit, but he also took a long hiatus from the game and has since come back and is really loving the game again. So I think that's really good for him. So we'll have to monitor his growth because he's been pretty much sticking it out solo with El Tigre. But we'll just have to see how he does. So if you love Muskie, make sure to give him a Go Musky chat in the YouTube comments below. Because <laughs> definitely it's cool to see him grind. Next up, the final character in this tier. Azula. Azula with Alpha, one of the best players in the world at Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2, has proven and proven and proven this character has some shit. And a lot of this stuff that he has, he is not, like, shared, he is not, <laughs> he's hiding some of this shit. And I'm all for it, I think it's cool to, like, hide some tech once in a while, you know? When you're trying to make that buck, go for it. But otherwise, just try to help people improve, you know? And he does that, he's a great guy. So, I understand he's chasing the bag a little bit here or there. But, uh, Alpha, d definitely... Goes toe-to-toe, -to -toe, definitely gets the results with this character, but he's the only one doing it. Which, like, there are other characters, El Tigre, Aprils, there's multiple of, Ran Stimpy, there's multiple of, Crabs even, there's multiple of, Embers, there's four of them, what the heck, at the top level, you know? Like, there's a lot of these characters that 
uh, like are all really good that have multiple um and she doesn't but despite that i do think that she's better than the rest of them why because she just has stuff on every di granted not every di option she has means that she's going to kill you uh, but she does have things where like when she goes snare 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 and you don't di the right way she might hit you with like up air right and that's not going to kill you light up air but I think that light up air still gets damage where other characters might have had to end their combo there, you know, and like done a reset. But unlike that, she definitely has the opportunity and the options to continue the damage flow, right? She has things like fireball that just control neutral. She has things like electric that just can snipe you if you're not paying attention or can com be comboed into. She has the di diagonal down side special that are seeing more and more application in combos and kill confirms which is really cool to see so if you haven't seen that watch some alpha azula gameplay because it's sick <laughs> but she also does have uh, her struggles she still isn't the um, best when it comes to recovery even though she has plenty of diverse ways to use them in cohesion where she actually can just like do a side special do an up special ex you know cancel it you know whatever she needs to do to get back she has creative ways to switch it up right where other characters might not go as far, might not have a horizontal moving side special, might not have a vertical moving up special the way she does. But hers doesn't snap the ledge usually, so it's one of those other things too where you can pretty much edge guard her if you don't get hit by that rising hitbox of up special. So you just gotta see what you can do versus her. And usually she comes out on top, but there definitely are some players and characters that give her plenty of struggle, even in this meta. So, But she is the last just simply great but not the meta character. I think it's possible that she would be the meta, but I think that she's kind of is just right outside of the characters you think of when you think of these characters are simply messed up. So, starting off at the bottom of this tier. Grand Magurdi. I think that she is a character that even at the top end, we've seen Stango do quite well when he enters stuff. Did well at Genesis 1 Genesis, by the way. Uh, that was a long time ago now. The season's nearing its end. We don't see too many Gerties uh, anymore at the top level besides Stango. So it's kind of just been him, you know, making that at the top. I also think there's not too many other people pushing this character. And so it's hard to say where she truly fits into this meta. But of the characters, I think that she is the one you see the least out of all the characters in this meta. But that doesn't mean she's the worst. It just means that she's the least common, which is, to be said, uh, is something to be said, right? So... This character has fast frame data. Her down special is egregious. It's an anti-air somehow. How do you make that mistake? Or how do you like code that, you know? <laughs> like, but joking aside, she definitely has options. She has like slime dash into neutral neutral special. She has kill confirms into knee. She has knee into knee. She has knee into knee into knee. She has things that are just really messed up. She has a disjointed back air, a, uh, a very combo heavy up air. You know, she has a lot of sh sauce, right? Her recovery is really good. Snare is really good. But other characters, even in this tier, have better movement snares than she does. Because she is still limited to one pair of time. Unlike. And you know who I'm thinking about if you know. So, we'll get to him in a little bit. But, next up on this list. Squidward. Connor J. Meaty. And multiple other top players have been juggling this character. And showing that the... Uh, the routes he has that worked at the launch still work for him now. <laughs> and uh, that's just been the way of the game, you know. You go, you get your up, up tilt, you get your fair, you get your second fair. Maybe you get an up air, or, or you get a painting. If you get a painting and it doesn't kill, you get e your EX note. If you don't get your EX note, you get your snare. If you get your... Uh, Painting, sometimes you can get a painting still, you know? Like, he has insane routes that Connor J has nearly perfected. Connor J doing quite well yesterday at Dutchman's Dungeon 11, winning it. Dude cooks, you know? What, what can you ask? Character does well at all levels, carries you off the top on stages like Technodrome and Rooftop, as well as others even, and it kills you off the side with uh, painting on pretty much every other stage, right? Like character can have a 1 in 9 chance to instantly kill you from up throw or up tilt or any other move that sends you up into the side special and can lower or raise those chances with the EX version of painting which makes it a 1 in 3 chance that you just die instantly. 
This character is crazy. He has double dare. He has a fair that has a lot of hit stun that just makes you inactionable for a huge amount of time if you just get sent too far away. He has all these options that are just fucked. His recovery is really good. Rage is really good. EX Note is really good. He has just so many comboable options, and the flowchart is just insane with this character. The character just cooks, you know. And so I think that this character definitely still is up there in terms of what he can do. And the only thing stopping him from being better is simply just the character has uh, those above him who are even more correct, right? <laughs> And obviously, RNG is not the best thing to want in a way that you want to be consistently dominant. So obviously, you're going to have days where you just simply don't get a freaking 9. You don't, you don't get the bold and brash. Like, you're not going to always get your best option. And even if you can manipulate the RNG, you still have a 2 and 3 chance that you don't get that, right? So, you're almost making the odds worse <laughs> in that way. So, but well, I'll say this. Next up. We have another character that's really messed up. Korra. And every character in this tier is messed up. So when every time every time I say there's somebody more messed up, it's just that's just how it is, you know. So Korra, Lily Shershi, easily best player EU, easily one of the best players in the world, easily the best Korra. Has other players like her that cook. So they is another one who they are just insane, right? They all are just insane with Korra. Has crazy backers, crazy snares, up special combos, and granted up special combos into snare. Snare as a move is just messed up. You have so many options. Light Nair is messed up. Fair is messed up. You have all these options that just are always going to be insane and are always going to be really good. Her movement with side special and recovery option with it is still cracked. She still has insane options with it, you know. Results wise are decent. So I think that this is just where she fits into the meta right now. Like, it's, it's just all there is to it, right? There's gotta be characters now where we're getting into that fray of like, hey, where is this character at realistically? And I think uh, we're gonna be seeing like some messed up stuff here in the future. So, next up, Gerald. Gerald, easily, easily a, like, top five, top six, like, top-ish area, you know? He's definitely a problem character. Nair kind of plays the game for you. He has all these giant projectiles and moves that can just cover ledge, kill you, uh, combo, you know, whatever. Just, just, like, up air, light up air into itself is a good combo starter. You can do down throw into it. You can do down throw in the fair if they DI away. You can do strong up air as a kill confirm. From, like, up special. Up special on its own spikes if you let the last hit hit, you know? So, depending on where you're at, that can be a good edge guard option or what, or, like, whatever, you know? So, it's just, you have all these things that are just insane, right? Like, it's, it's crazy. It, it's really, it really is crazy what you can get away with with Gerald. And the dude definitely has results. Megas, Meeker, and many other uh, Geralds besides the two top ones are cooking all the time. We had Plup, who, wow, this was a long time ago, like, was doing well when he played. In this patch, though, Megas and Meeker are two of the best Geralds that run the business, with Megas being the absolute best. Dude's always cooking. Dude's always making jokes like, yeah, like, I just win, I'm carried, whatever. Everybody also says the same thing. Like, just jokingly, you know, like, yep, you're carried, Megas, yeah. Just continue to be carried, you're good. <laughs> but no, joking aside, character's really good. Character's going to continue to be good. And, like, I don't know what, you, like, what you'd want to change about this character. You have to, like, really, like, I think, if anything, maybe tone down his boxing tools, because he's a zoner that has insane, insane grounded options as boxing tools and aerial options that also, like, help his zoning even more. And that always makes for an insane, um, an insane, like, option, you know. So, but speaking of those characters, we have even more coming up, so stay tuned. I think next up, we're going to have... Mm, no, not him. I picked the wrong one. <laughs> this one. Rocco. Talk about characters with good... Oh. Okay. Ad block. Get out of here. We don't like ad block. Of the characters here, Rocco has strong blocking tools. 
boxing tools, excuse me, and also just has some of the most insane projectiles in the game. Strong downer pretty much like nullifies a lot of the recoveries and a lot of characters who try to get to ledge. It's just insane how easily he does that. Up tilt in the up air, light up air, crazy combo, strong, uh, up strong is just really good for kills, just straight hits, you know. He has other ways of getting it, like Spunky is really good still. Uh, pick, uh, what is that called? Jackhammer is really good. Like, he has all these options, still super really good, you know. Just insane, insane, insane options. So it's just, he has all these situations where he just dominates, you know. And we've been seeing it. FPZ has won a couple of Dutchman's Dungeons. Wins pretty much every single huge raw Monday he goes to. Dude just is cooking. He's top seed, I believe. At, like a lot of the events he enters and uh, it's just gonna be one of those things where when you see him compete and you see him enter his bracket you know he's gonna cook you know when he's the top seed of your event he's gonna cook everybody he's who's below him right and some weeks obviously he has people who are better than him like that enter and he still gives them a run for their money and there's not many people better than him right like <laughs> like fbz is probably one of the best people in nasby like in terms of just skill wise he's absolutely in that contention or the best and I think that it's definitely uh, true that this character is one of the best in the game so that leaves us with a few characters left four characters who is left beavers Jimmy Danny, Aang. So, of the characters that I have left, next up is Angry Beavers. Angry Beavers has been seeing a million bazillion 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 results. Locust pretty much farms every single week of Dutchman's Dungeon. He has only lost like two now. Maybe three. I think it wasn't yesterday was his lowest placement, but he's seen more like not first placed and like placements in like the more recent weeks than we've seen from him ever. And usually like when he doesn't place first, it's like third or fifth, I think. Those are the two, but the character is insane. The character is super good, and the character still has a ton of room to grow. With Locus just recently getting into Norb, and like Daggett is just the the main carry for the character. Double snare, like strong up air that like is super easy to combo into. Up tilt that is insane. He deals damage really quick. The assists have pretty much no cooldown. So even if you don't like hit the character, next time he uses the assist is pretty much the instant after he uses the last one, right? So it's like he just has all these options. Tornado is really good. You get matchup checked by stuff like Downstrong on on uh, Daggett if you don't know the uh, DI direction. So it's like you just kind of lose to that move if you don't know how you can get out of it. And uh, it's just one of those things where you have to like like what can you do versus this character? A lot of care a lot of players uh, think that this character is top three. I disagree with that. And that's not downplay. I just genuinely think that, if, like, right now, in the meta, right now, he is not top three. We've seen higher heights from other players who are piloting other characters on this list. And I think that there are matchups that, while the Beavers struggle with, I think that those ones are going to, with time, not be as hard. I think that Aang versus Beavers, while it looks tough right now, is still Aang favored. But realistically, it's going to become closer to even as time goes on. I think if Locust sticks with the game, and we're going to be seeing that, like, Norb uh, usage rise. And that's just for kills. You know, Norb is the best one for killing for the two of them. Even though Daggett is also really good with his up strong confirms, his sub air confirms, you know? So it's like... How high can this character get? Like, who knows? Who knows, right? But, insane character nonetheless. I think that he is leagues above the rest of the characters in this meta. And the characters above him are, like, in groups, I'd say. Groups of two, you know? So, Jimmy, above him. 
We've seen higher highs from Jimmy, and don't say we haven't. I definitely think that Leviathan, probably the number one player in the world, uncontested, who plays Jimmy, has shown us higher highs with this character than we've seen from Locust with uh, Angry Beavers. And he isn't even the best character in the game. So, like, I'll say this. If the top two ever were to be nerfed for any reason, or if Jimmy were to be even slightly buffed in any, like, significant way, Jimmy would be top one, easily. And this character is insane. The ping pong combos with Goddard are insane. Supper kills everybody consistently all the time, always. And if you don't get killed by it, it's because you got killed by Fair or Strung uh, or Snare. And it's just, goddamn, like, character just cooks. He kills you. Goddard spikes you. Goddard has way more health than Zim. Jimmy's recovery is really good. He can jump and act out of his up special. Like, he has so many options. His best stuff with uh with Goddard ping ponging isn't even necessary. Like Stempack only just started doing small stuff with Goddard ping ponging like recently. And we're, it's it it's worked out for him. He started beating Locus or taking games off of Locus as of late because of his usage of Goddard. And while there is ways for Locus to break Goddard, we're seeing that become way more and more of an issue for characters that just simply out can't out camp him, can't break Goddard easily, you know? Like, not everybody can just kill him easily. And while you're rewarded to because you gain slime from doing so, from killing Goddard, it's not always an option. Or, like, Jimmy's gonna interrupt you. It's Pac-Man Hydrant, but on wheels. This this Pac-Man Hydrant can fly around, distract you, show you a reward for hitting it, in the same way that Pac-Man's, like, when you hit it, it gets launched. And in this game, it's when you hit it, you get your slime, which is super valuable. He's gonna hit you and punish you for trying to get slime. So your risk and reward is skewed to what Jimmy wants. He can give you the reward, or he can simply choose to punish you for trying to get some. <laughs> Character is insane. Recovery is really good. Items are really good. Zoning is really good. Goddard is really good. Combos are really good. This character never dies. He's somehow SpongeBob weight. Doesn't make sense. This character is insane. Realistically, I think he's possibly even higher than this. But I think that putting him higher than this would be insane. Um, and uh, I, like, I don't really believe it. But I genuinely think that if this character ever were to get buffed for some reason, he would be instant top one. Like, he, there's very... The gap is not very big. But the two above definitely are insane. Next up, Danny Phantom. Danny, do just every glitch we find, he just gets better and better. And this character already is good without any glitches. Like, stuff like the uh, aforementioned super into he can literally become a phantom and phase through walls uh, glitch. That is completely consistent, by the way. You don't even need to hit the super to do that. <laughs> You just can phase through walls, you know, completely skip the ledge, right? So it's just, like, stuff like that. His combo game is insane. Recovery is insane. His kill confirms are insane. His projectile beat is transcendent sometimes. No other projectile in the, in the game has that type of property. It's not always like that, but sometimes it is. The character is just absolutely, absolutely, absolutely insane. Has insane burst options. Doesn't need to use slime for much besides burst. Um... Dude just is insane. His grab is really good. He gets a lot off of it. Back air is really strong. Down strong is really good. Like Momo Zang, who's a top player of him, Nintunist has one. Even other top players like Alpha, who've been solo mains for a long time, now have a pocket Danny. Danny is so good and so like simple to play that top players are picking up Danny as their secondary because he's better as a secondary than, a than using Aang would be as a secondary. Danny is that good. Like, genuinely, Danny is that good. And there are still plenty of players that still have a case to try and make of Danny being better than Aang. But I disagree. Too much stuff Aang has. Neutral skip. He has needles. He has so many options that just aren't insane. He's triple jump. He has light up air and a sup air. He has sup air and a sup air. He has sup air and a sup air and a sup air. He has up and a sup air. He has... <laughs> up e into sup air. He has up e into snare. He has up air, in, or he has up air, sup air, up e, uh, sup air into slime dash snare, or something like that. So I'm like, I don't even know. He has something along the lines of whatever I just said. And the character is just leagues better. 
He can camp you like Sonic the Hedgehog if you really want to with down special. We've seen hockey do it. We've seen hockey do uh, start doing some more of the advanced stuff where you do kills off the side with up special, I believe, from like fair. Like what? Fair, fair into like up special or something like that? I forget which one it is. But whatever it is, it finishes with up air. Or up special, I mean. And it's just... Dude has too much. Like too much to think of. And you don't even need most of it. The most advanced stuff is only just being added to Aang's kit, and he's already considered the best in the game. So, this character needs to be gutted. He needs some, like, recovery frames on, like, his landing options when he does, like, the falling, um, the falling part of up B. Like, he needs to have some punish frames. Like, some of his moves just need to be able to be punished. And hopefully we'll get that at some point. I know people were saying maybe it would be soon if, if ever we get an Aang nerf, but... Hasn't happened yet, so unfortunately for us, we're going to be living in an, an Aang world for a bit longer. As for top players, we have Pixie Gain Stereo, we have Hockey, we have um, Kudo. We have plenty of top players who play this character regularly. We have Laudum, who has them as a secondary. We have plenty of top players who use this character all the time that pretty much dominate the meta anytime they're in a bracket, right? So... That's where we're at right now in terms of the tier list for this game. Let me know what you, your thoughts are in the comment section. This has been a rather long video. We're nearly at an hour <laughs> of uh, just talking about this game. And I think the meta is in an okay spot right now. I think that the people in the meta, if they were able to be toned down universally, to be like on par with that, those of the great but not meta tier, I just think that they have too many options on every DI. They have too many options on, like, in general, you know? Too many ways to win without any sort of negative value, right? I feel like the peak of what a character should be able to do in this game is Azula. Like, whatever Azula can do, or maybe even April, like, good. That, that's, about as, that's about as good as I think the meta should be. But it's quite a bit higher than that right now. So yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on this tier list in the comments. Let me know if you love it, whether you hate it, and whether you want me to burn and explode and lose my all four of my stocks if you really dislike this tier list. I need to hear it all. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And finally, make sure to like the video. If you liked it, make sure to dislike it if you didn't. <laughs> I don't care. Either one helps, like honestly. But if you want, like it. But if you really like to support me, Make sure to subscribe to me or share this video and just make sure that those you share it to subscribe to me so we can finally reach that goal of 1,000 subscribers. We are so close, everybody. We're almost there. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time in the next video.